Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new, or at least the new-ish, Alien Gear. This is their Rapid Force holster. But before we get into the new holster, if you want to help me out personally, you can, of course, like, share, and subscribe, as all of that is free and does help me out quite a bit. Also, go ahead and comment your favorite plastic weapon retaining device in the comments down below. Now, with all that out of the way, full disclosure on this holster is I did get this holster directly from Alien Gear. I've had this for about six months or so, all the way since back in March. So I've been using it for quite a while. I've been using this and the Safari Land, and full disclosure on the Safari Land as well. Safari Land did send me out their uh, duty holster as well. So I'm not really biased one way or the other when it comes to Safari Land versus Alien Gear. They both sent me out duty holsters to review. We will be talking about this one, but again, keep in mind that I did not pay for either of them. The Safari Land video will probably be coming at a later point in time, and then eventually we'll compare them against each other. Now, starting off, this is a level three holster from Alien Gear. This is their Rapid Force. Now, as you see it getting into price, this is again the level three with the MRDS hood and the light compatibility. This one here, I think if you spec it out on their website with just the standard slide attachment is $155. And then if you wanted the drop leg with the swivel attachment, I think it can go all the way up to like $230. The base price is around like a hundred bucks or something like that. So again, depending on how you spec it out, depending on what gun it is, what finish, that sort of thing, you can make it very expensive. But again, for around that hundred to $150 price tag for a basic duty holster, or at least a very good duty holster in this case, it's priced appropriately and is going to be competitive with Safari Land. Now, this specific holster is, of course, a right-handed holster for a Glock 17. This is my Glock 17 Gen 3 that is heavily modified and at this point in time basically has no stock components left on it. Now, fortunately, this holster is fairly compatible with aftermarket components, much more compatible than my Safari Land, the 6378 or whatever model that Safari Land is that I have on hand. This holster does have more adjustable retention and is also again a little bit more forgiving of aftermarket components so that is going to vary greatly depending on what components you have. Now getting into the actual retention methodology on the holster itself so the first thing you're going to need to do is press down that large button here in the center which will automatically defeat the back strap and the hood and then of course if you press in and down on this large lever it will actually remove the retention system or the lock on the gun itself. Now, fortunately, the actual retention on the gun itself is via the ejection port on the slide itself, rather than the frame or the light like you'll see on some other holsters, because of course the slide is considerably stronger, being usually a solid piece of steel. And then of course you can draw out your gun by depressing that lever. So in practice, it is a fairly simple system. Press in to defeat your hood and back strap, press down at the same time, and you can of course withdraw your holster. The fit is adjustable, so you actually have this key here in the front that you can adjust how tight it is in there from the factory. It will come very loose. And then you actually have this gauge, kind of an increasing lever gauge or increase, increasing graph here that will actually show you how tight it is in there. I have it fairly tight, so it does have a little bit of passive retention as well in there rather than just as soon as you defeat the button, it'll fall out because it, of course, won't still fall out. It does take a very active, very intentional movement to get it out of the holster. So again, depending on your slide and specific Glock, whether you're running a stock Glock or an aftermarket Glock, you can very easily adjust the retention to make it a little bit looser. So now it is a little bit more loose or tighten it up a little bit. Again, generally speaking, I do make it a little bit tighter and that way there it's a little bit more intentional to actually get it out. Again, this is a duty holster, a level three duty holster for more serious applications. So if it's gonna come out, it should be coming out intentionally. Personally, I'm a big fan of simple adjustments like that, basically righty tidy, lefty loosey, and you get it to where you want it, where you feel comfortable, and you set and forget. Now, when it comes to actual mounting options, they do have a lot of different options on the website. I went with the very simple slide design. So this slide will go anywhere from like one and a half to two and a half inches, and you actually have this little adjustment plate as well to kind of lock it up. So I was running it on an HRT belt, which I believe their new HRT belt, which is a two inch belt. So you set it to the two inch plate and then that will of course lock the belt in so you don't get the holster moving up or down. And again, it is adjustable for bigger belts. Now, depending on how thick your belt is, you might need to adjust it a little bit more, but again, it is nice that they include the plate so that you can of course adjust it and make it a very tight fit, not only to the gun, but also to the belt. Now, moving down from there on the actual mounting plate itself, the mounting plate is adjustable for cant, so you can cant it forward or back, I believe 15 degrees either direction. 
Usually I don't really care about that sort of thing. I like it just straight up and down. Now they also like to charge you for the adjustable swivel piece that attaches to your thigh strap. And of course you can also get a low ride or a mid ride. I believe this is just the, the standard like high ride. So it's not very uh, low whatsoever and it works just fine. Now I kind of jury rigged a Safari Land thigh strap in here. So it is fairly high. So usually when you see it, it'll be like down at an angle like this. However, it does work and they didn't charge me an extra 80 bucks. Well, again, I didn't pay for it. I could have asked for it, but you can definitely get it to work with just the base plate without having to spend extra money on the adjustable swivel. Would it be a little bit more comfortable with the adjustable swivel? Probably. Has it ever been an issue? No. Now, one thing that I do want to mention quickly about light compatibility on the holster is that this is kind of a one size fits most solution. So when you go to on their website and you select a light compatible holster, it will give you a readout of all of the lights that are guaranteed to fit with it. However, if you use oddball strange lights, they're probably or they may or may not work. Most of the major name brand lights are going to work just fine. This is a TLR one clone that I've been using for quite some time. Fits perfectly. So most of this are surefires and other lights. Most of the, again, the name brand big lights that most people are going to be using are going to work, work in this holster. But again, keep that in mind that some of them are not, especially if you're using like some weird laser aiming module combo units or whatnot on your pistol, it's probably not going to fit. Now, as far as materials and construction goes on the holster, this is made out of a very thick plasticky polymer material. Uh, it's basically two pieces that are then bolted together in about 12 locations around the holster itself. It seems very strong on the website. They claim that it can uh, withstand 500 pounds of crush force this way. And then on the retention system itself, 800 pounds of pressure, which is again, very high if those numbers are to be believed. It is a very, very rigid polymer. And now I'm not particularly kind to any of my equipment and it has held up very well, though it should be noted that uh, there is less flexibility to it. So I would assume it would be a little bit more brittle. So depending on some super harsh impact or extreme drops or something like that, it could have an issue there. But so far, everything that I've seen and heard on these holsters, even from people who use them professionally, is that the durability is good to go. Now, getting into one of the most slash least important parts of a duty holster is actually going to be the draw itself. So the draw is very intuitive and it is very, very quick. Now, again, speed on a duty holster matters, but it's not necessarily the most important thing. If you're somebody who's going to be walking around with a holster on your hip through crowds and other people, whatnot, the most important thing is going to be the retention system. The retention system, once you get used to it, is very fast. It is very easy to depress quickly. Basically, again, it is just a inward and downward motion with your thumb and then a draw at the same time, and you can do it very quickly. Now, again, retention and security of the gun itself is going to be paramount in a duty holster. Speed is nice, but it's not necessarily the most important thing, again, when we're talking about a duty kind of professional style holster. That being said, again, this is a very quick holster that does have a good fitment, like the base fit of the holster to the gun is very good. The retention methodology locking onto the ejection port is also very good combined with a back strap, MRDS hood, that sort of thing. And a, again, this is a level three holster. So it does require a multi-step process to get it out. Fortunately, that process can be done very quickly, very intuitively, consistently, all that sort of fun thing. Now, I've been using this and the Safari Land holster on and off every now and again when I'm getting this, I will simply push the button and not quite hit the lever quite enough. And so I'll just sit there and fight with the gun for a second, then depress the button and then I'll be able to pull it out every now and again. But that's in a kind of an odd situation where I am switching between two different retention methodologies out on the range, sometimes on the same day. And so I will make a mistake. However, if I'm just using one, usually I don't make any sort of mistakes like that. And of course, if you're practicing dry firing with your gear that you're actually going to be using on a daily basis, that would be the most ideal scenario. So the fitment on the holster is good. The retention methodology on the holster is also good. The draw can be quick and intuitive as long as you're doing your part and doing your practice, getting in your reps, that sort of thing. It does have all of the different mounting options you could want. The Obviously, the simplest one is going to be the cheapest one. And then if you want QD and other things like that, you are going to pay for it. So at the end of the day, would I recommend this over a Safari Land? I probably wouldn't recommend it over a Safari Land. However, I would buy the one that you can actually pick up for your specific gun and light combination. And again, this is a very good holster that I would recommend to anyone looking at picking up a level three duty holster as it's worked perfectly. The performance for me has been very good. It is still allows me to be quite quick when I want to be quick. But again, it also has a very good level of retention. 
So that's really about it for me on this holster, but let me know what you guys think of the Alien Gear Rapid Force Duty Holster in the comments down below. Personally, I will be keeping this holster around for quite some time. I think it does a lot of things very well. It's also a holster I enjoy using quite a bit. And just for those simple things, I will be continue to use it in the future. So with all those things out of the way, guys, I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace off. Hopefully I won't be quite so sick in the next one either. Ugh. Do something with that. Do something with that. On with that. I don't know why that one there was so hard for me to hit there, but uh, just really didn't like it.